Tonight at 10, three young men have been stabbed to death. It's your life. It's either you get your life taken off you, or you, just or you can take someone else's life and end up in jail. Why are young people carrying knives? I'm Wassi Gopher, a student from Western Supermare, and I'm going to be diving deep into the reason why the knife crime epidemic is such a rising problem in North Somerset. Being from such a small town, you wouldn't expect there to be so much knife crime in the area, but you'd be surprised. I witnessed three different attacks with knives, with the first one being at the age of 14. Juveniles from age 10 to 17 were the offenders in 21% of cases. In 2017, 284 incidents with a knife were recorded in North Somerset. This means a person was stabbed every six days. Even in Western Supermare, possession with a weapon has increased from 58% to 111% from last year. I wanted to speak to someone who's had experience with knife crime and has been in a gang environment. 10 years ago, Paul left his gang after being hospitalized seven times from stab wounds. He kindly agreed to give us an interview about how knife crime changed his life and the people around him. When you carried your knife, how did it make you feel? That same old cliche, really, I guess, felt like that if someone pulled a knife out of me, which I was worried about because of the environment I was in, it would even the playing field up. Yeah. I probably felt vulnerable sometimes about it. And that's only because I was in a gang, I was a known gang member, so other gangs knew I was a gang member. So, you know, you put yourself in that situation, you think to yourself, well, they're carrying a knife, I need to carry one. Did you now, carry a knife with you everywhere? Everywhere. I got arrested five times for carrying a knife. And that statement alone tells you that the first time I got caught, didn't deter me, did it? I'd already made my mind up, you got me? Yeah. To be honest with you, even though I didn't ever stab anybody, I got stabbed myself, having a knife on me just made someone else vulnerable, me vulnerable. But by having it, I guess that is the whole environment of being involved with gangs, because you know other gang members carry knives, so you're trying to even the playing field, you know? So I put myself in an environment that was quite unhealthy and dangerous. Yeah. And that was just the mentality of where I was in that, in that time of my life, you know? Do you feel like knife crime is gonna keep on increasing? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, it, 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 the only way, we, you never stop it. You never stop it. We need to stabilise it, no matter the difference. So, stabilisation means that we need to keep it at a certain number of years of kids being stabbed to death. Well, that's not stable, is it, at the minute? It's all time high. And it will grow and grow and grow until the government or someone somewhere wakes up and says it's law. If you work with kids age 10 to 16 annually, every, every year you give them a knife crime workshop, probably from someone who's got experience. You know, not no disrespect to teachers. What do they know about knife crime? They teach academics. I'm one of those people that have survived stabbings for whatever reason they got involved with it and talk to his kids about the truth. After like that even happened, what made you stop like carrying knife? What was it, like, Well eventually, eventually, you know, I, I I managed to clean myself up, got off the drugs and the gang fell apart just too long from prison sentences, mental health problems. And I looked back and I thought, you know what, I don't I don't need to carry this knife. You know, it, there, there was no need for me to carry it because I wasn't involved in criminality anymore. Why do you think there's been such an increase in knife crime in the past couple of years? Because of gangs, drugs. Like they've increased. In well, the past of years. yeah. I, well, you just said it. We was having a conversation before the cameras went on about your friend being stabbed, drug related. Yeah. If you took drugs out of the equation, the gangs don't survive. They sell drugs. If you take the gangs out of the situation, there's less knives on the street. Now, I guess some of the kids are carrying knives for protection because they're worried about gang members robbing them for their phones, etc., etc. But I was purely say that. 70% of all knife crime and stabbings, 70%, 7 out of 10 stabbings, whether they're fatal or not, are related to crime. And most crime today is drug related and gang related. So, you know, I strongly believe that, yeah, most of the knife crime is, 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 is due to that. Lewis Wilson is a Western College student who was arrested at the age of 13 for possession of a knife. He met up with me to discuss how he changed his ways. Well, when I was about 13 years old, uh, I got involved with my friend uh, in a knife crime sort of incident. Uh, I had a knife on me at the time because I thought, you know, I was a bit hard as a kid. And then uh, my friend pointed out someone that he knew and uh, we went up to him, showed him the knife, uh, 
said some things to him, uh, said some things about his family, and then we sort of just left it at that. He parted ways. He was, you could tell he was quite scared. He was shaking. He was like probably only 11 years old at the time. I was about 13. And then uh, we parted ways. His dad then came up to me, uh, angrily asked me for the knife. And being the 13 year old boy, I was quite terrified of this big manly dad. So I just gave him the knife. And then uh, about two days later, there was a policeman at my door. Uh, he uh, arrested me there, uh, told me I had to go to court. And from court, I got 20 hours community service. I had to do a course on knife crime. Uh, I'd say that really educated me. Uh, it definitely showed me the repercussions that knife crime can have on people. I could really tell when I like showed the kid the knife that he was definitely terrified. What was it, the uh, so they sort of showed me um, some videos of people that have been stabbed, uh, different weapons and that sort of thing, and how it changed their lives after they've been stabbed, and the people that committed the crimes and what had happened to them. Well, it really made me scared, to be honest. I really didn't want to get caught up in it anymore. I didn't really want to end up in prison or anything, especially at age 13. I didn't want to go down that road. My name's Dean Lewis. I'm a pro and boxing coach from Western Superman. Let's say, in a scenario, you're in an alleyway and someone pulls out a knife on you and they try to take your belongings. What would you do in that situation yourself? See these trainers down here? <laughs> yeah. I'll be using them. <laughs> um, I wouldn't... I wouldn't promote to anyone um, to stand there and try and take a knife off of someone or try and get the knife off and stab them or try and defend the knife. The f my honest opinion uh, to anyone is you only get one life. So, I mean, once it's over, it's over. So why would you stand there when someone's got a weapon in their hand that could potentially end your life with one, with one stab, you know? So, I mean, my advice would be literally to get on your toes and, and run away. Don't, don't ever try and, don't try and be the hero, you know? The, you can only be the hero once. If, if you're the hero and it goes wrong, then it's the end, you know? And um, yeah, so definitely don't, don't hang around. Get, get away as fast as you can, I would, 100%. So, so you wouldn't use any boxing or anything to like, try and defend yourself? Or? Definitely not. I mean, if, if, someone, if someone was at physically coming at you with the knife, I mean, it, and you had to maybe block block it, yes, but the, the first opportunity you had to get away, I would get away as quick as you can. You know? We met up with Zoe Chegwin and Mike Vass from the Avon and North Somerset Police Force, who are currently trying to tackle the issue of knife crime. I wanted to find out what the police are doing to try and reduce knife crime. Why do you think so many young people are now getting involved in knife crime? Um, I think it's... Um maybe they have or they see all the the press and media around knife crime they feel that if they carry a knife they're, they're, it's going to pr help protect them it actually has the opposite effect is if you have a knife on you if you have to use that knife it's likely to be taken off you and used against you so it's a bit of a false um, preconception that, that by carrying a knife you're going to be protected actually it's, it's going to be putting you into more danger um, because of Every, every police area has found that they've had an increase in knife crime. I think because of that publicity, um, more young people are getting more involved or it's becoming more prevalent in the news. What effect does knife crime have on family and friends? Well, <laughs> it affects everybody. So um, one of our education videos that we have um, is an interview of a, a young lady whose brother was, was um, killed after being at a nightclub. Mm. Um, and she said the effect that it had on not just her, but her whole family and all the friends about that fear of, of being out in that area, the fact that they've lost a loved one. So it, affe it affects not just that one person who's died and lost their life, it affects absolutely everybody that's come into contact with that person. It also affects police officers, it affects emergency services, because mm -hmm. nobody wants to see a young person lose their life um, through violence. It's, it's, it's really far reaching. I spoke to a nurse last week, we, we've, we've had a few um, serious incidents in the last couple of months and even in Somerset which have been stabbings um, whatever the the root reason for them I don't need to go into but um, they end up ultimately um, it, it, you know if there's if they've survived in a hospital where there's you know there's a, a, a magnitude of healthcare professionals that are then trying to save their lives so like Zoe said you've got the police officers that go through that kind of initial trauma so excuse me um, they go through that initial trauma of what they're presented with at the scene, which can, can be quite horrific. You know, and everyone's just a human being, doesn't matter what job they're in. 
So many young people are now carrying knives. After weeks of negotiation, we finally met up with a teen who carries a knife with the rule that their identity remained anonymous. Why did you move from North London all the way to St Paul's in Bristol? Well, basically, I got in a street fight. I saw, I saw a chicken shop and then put a knife in it and stabbed this guy like five or six times. And then the first obviously know where I am in it. So my cousin called me down to move down to Bristol to sell the goods. <laughs> yeah, do you carry a knife on you? Yeah, I always have carrying a knife on me. Have you got one on you yeah, right now? Me, yeah. Is it okay if we see it? Yeah. It's a shit knife, but it does me good, doesn't it? It does me good. Um, yeah. Why do you carry a knife? Do I carry a knife? Or oh, basically, I go, go around with the ground people. So I was walking down the street. Obviously, I seen this guy walking behind me. Pull up, yeah? Then he put me against the wall. Obviously, I noticed the knife was going with me that day. So I pushed him and legged it. And since that day, you've always carried a knife with yeah, you? Yeah, since that day, I've always been carrying a knife with me for protection. Uh, have you ever been stabbed yourself? Oh, no, I've never been stabbed. I've witnessed my mates and shit and stabbed. I've seen him in the hospital bed, like, parents crying. Do you think you'll ever stop carrying a knife? Hopefully. Because I want a bit of life, you know? So you want to get out of the life of, like, yeah, yeah, knife yeah. like, drug yeah, life? Yeah, yeah. Have you seen people who've ever been incarcerated or in prison from knife crime? Yeah, obviously, yeah. Some of my mandems and shit in prison. To conclude this documentary, I feel like knife crime, no matter what, is always going to be there, no matter what. As we've seen, when we interviewed Paul Hannaford, we interviewed someone who carried a knife at the age of 13, and we just interviewed a knife carrier now. That's three completely different ages that knife carrying. Paul Hannaford was like 10, 15 years ago when he was carrying a knife. To this day, people are still carrying knives and it's just keep on rising and rising and rising. I feel the police are doing well. When we interviewed the police, they spoke to us how there's a lot of police bins, how they're given a lot more talks. However, personally, in my experience, I didn't get any of those talks. I feel like what the police and not only the police, the government need to do is instruct more, more rules to ensure knife crime isn't happening because a lot of young kids are now dying to, to this, to this problem. More kids need to be taught about why knife crime is such a bad thing and being taught to put down their knives.